Hello friends, it's Erin here and it is time for a walkthrough of my 2017 Hobonichi Tosho Cousin. Let's get into it because this is a big book. Look, look how big that is. This is a little page marker. It's one long piece of leather that you can split between two pages. And uh, I can't remember where it's from, but I'll link to it. It's so beautiful and very handy inside this book. Okay. Now I knew at the beginning of the year that I wanted an all-in-one book. I wanted a monthly outline, a daily weekly section, and then a day to a page section to use as my journal, which is exactly why I bought this book. It is an A5, and the cover that it's in is a chic sparrow. It's a siren from the Odyssey line, and I ordered it distressed, which is why it has all these beautiful stains on it that you can see. And when I put the two together, this cover and this book, it was not love, it was destiny. It's just been a joy every single day, every time I take it out, every time I hold it in my hand, I am filled with love for this setup. Now, it's actually been really good. I know that at this time of the year, um, some of you will be looking at what planner to use for next year and maybe considering this. So hopefully this walkthrough will help inform your decision a little bit because there, you know, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, every moment of it, but there are some negatives as well, which, you know, I, I will talk to you about. So the first section is the monthly layout. Uh, pretty standard and it's actually really, really good. I love it. I love the way it's spread over two pages and it works really, really well for me. And I usually do my work planning in here. Not my family planning, not that kind of stuff. That goes on a, um, a wall calendar. So then we go to the weekly slash daily section. So the week is spread out over two pages. You've got the days, priority list there, and um, the times down here, which is very useful. And I did, over the course of the year, get more into using it that way. So I found that pretty good. Then we head over to the daily section. So this is what it looks like, a day to each page. You've got the moon phase, the day, the date, and what week of the year you are in. And each section here has a different color, or each month has a different color to it in this little square. So it's fabulous. There's a lot of space in the A5. I knew I needed space. I need space. I'm that person. So let me walk you through. Okay, it starts here. I'll just flip and chat, I guess. Okay. I'm using mostly fountain pens in here and this is fountain pen paper. It is beautiful to write on and watercolors. Fountain pens, watercolors and microns to start with mostly. Lots of washies from Jane Davenport. <laughs> These are stickers that I made myself and I love them so much. Things like this, you can see, they're done in watercolor and I have really heaped on the color. On this side too, heaped on the color and see how it doesn't come through and you can have beautiful paintings on both sides. This is the phenomenon of Tomo River paper. It is really, really incredible with watercolor. You just, you don't find that. It's paper thin because you've got a whole year's worth in here. So this baby's going to get thick by the end of the year. But considering how thin it is, the amount that you can lay on, on both sides, is mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. But there are times when it does go through. So for example, in here, I have used these Ecoline brush pens. And these have very, very concentrated inks and they do tend to go through, particularly because I, I put them on and then I'll use water to spread them out. And once you put the water in, that's when it soaks through, these, these concentrated inks soak through. Watercolors don't do that, but concentrated inks definitely do. So they go through to the other side. That doesn't really tend to bother me. I, I'm okay with this, with this going through the other side. This one was mostly was done with um, microns and India ink 
for the most part. And as you can see, pretty damn good. Look at that. And that's a lot of work in there, a lot of drawing in, a lot, a ton, and then inks as well, and nothing. That's India ink there too, um, Micron and Color Pencil. Really amazing what you can do, really, really amazing. Okay, so I've, I've uh, masking taped a few sections together because this is my journal, some of it's really personal. There are sections where I just write and write because I love to write. And this book lends itself really well to just writing and writing. And if anything, that was one of the downfalls for me is that you only really have a day, uh, one page for that day to write in. And oftentimes I wanted to write more and more and more. So I would go over page and over page and, and then, then I wouldn't use it for art journaling, wouldn't be able to use it to paint in for that particular day if you know what I mean. But luckily for me, I'm not one to put everything in order. I found, I mean, I started with the best of intentions at the beginning of the year, you know, every day do a page, but it didn't work like that. It didn't. And um, it was, it was actually a lot of pressure to try and get here and draw and paint something beautiful every day. I, f I felt this pressure with this book, I have to say. And I did much better off when I just let go. And when there was pages missed, there was pages missed. And I come back to them later and I fill them up with other things. And so I kind of felt that it was best to come at it as if the whole year, um, as if, you know, it's a depiction of my whole year, not just every day, but, you know, the different phases that I'm going through. This background here is done with Dilution's black marble. And uh, this stuff is so good, so fun to work on top of. I mean, that was the whole point, I believe, of the creation of this particular kinds of uh, journaling acrylic paint, so that it would dry fast and be really nice to work on top of, and it absolutely is. These are stamps that I made myself, and as you get like you can see this green coming through that is actually from the other side here on here I have used what's called color bursts and these are powdered pigments so super 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 concentrated you put a water wash sprinkle them on and they just go all over the page it's phenomenal it's intense and it soaks through sometimes I just want that intensity so I did find, if I put water on that now, that's where all the concentrated pigment is. If I put water on that, it would just cover that whole page in green. That's how intense they are. And, um, and they do come through. This is where I discovered my Jane Davenport paint pens. And I just fell in love with them and everything got paint penned for a while there. Really, really nice, beautiful to work on, on top of acrylic especially. And this is a big, these are big mixtures of all of those things. You've got um, brush pen and, oh, I think these sprays here are uh, Distress Spray Stains and these come through as well. Again, very, very concentrated ink will come through. That's exactly what's happened. These are Daniel Smith testers. I went through a big phase of drawing these little Selkie pups, I call them. They're not really Selkies, I suppose, because Selkies are women, but they're just my little seal pup people, kids. But I just, I, I made heaps of them. I absolutely love them. You'll see a few of them dotted out through the book. Yeah, here's another one. And this is a skull that I painted. And this is a copy of it that I stuck in. Another Selkie. I was absolutely mad for Selkies. I think um, Selkies themselves represent... Uh, 
women returning to their wildness, returning to their creativity. And that's exactly what I felt that I was doing in this book. So that's probably why the Selkie is so prevalent here. And um, this was a drawing based on a book called Stardust by Neil Gaiman. And this is Yvain, she's a star. And she has this beautiful quote in the book where uh, someone tries to give her some food and she says, well, I'm a star. We eat only darkness and we drink only light. Isn't that so beautiful? More Selkies. Gosh, I was obsessed. And look, big washes of watercolour here. Huge, huge washes. Um, see how that's come through? That was probably because some of this, again, is um, distress spray stain, which does come through. But man, I love this salty ocean. I don't care if it comes through. I love salty ocean spray. My daughter. Some personal stuff there. These are Jane Dav washi tapes. I just wanted to put all her faces together. You know how in her washies they come in separate strips for the separate parts of the face? So I wanted to see what they all look like. This is a very Jane Davenport style in this one. And this is sewing pattern paper that I cut up and stuck on. I do, I use a lot of matte medium in my book, a lot. Sticking other papers in and matte medium over the top and then painting over the top of that. And this is where I started to get obsessed with golden acrylics, golden fluid acrylics, iridescent gold. Man, this is such a great paint. I cannot get enough of this paint. It's awesome. This is a drawing that I did in Micron. And this is a swatch of the Koi watercolors, which I tend to take away when I go camping. If you guys, if anyone's been watching my channel for a while, you know that I do a lot of camping and I take way too many art supplies and I always do a bit of journaling while I'm camping. And I love to take the Koi watercolors with me because it's such a good compact little box and everything's there and it's good. So this was mainly made with Koi watercolors and brush pens. Again, this is that black marble. I love it. With a stamp over the top. And that ink is so nice. It's Archival Brilliance Moonlight White. So good on top of Dilution's black marble paint. It's so good. They're a match made in heaven. And this is a homemade stamp that I made too. Love this stamp. Okay, that's a serviette with matte medium. My watercolour foxy. So you can see that I tend to do a bit of everything in here. Write, paint, make notes, anything that I want to do really. I, I'm a very free form art journaler. It all just goes in and it's messy and colourful. That's how I that's how I roll. This one was also done while I was camping. So that will be Koi watercolours and Ecoline brush pens as well. I love this page and I've never really finished it. It doesn't feel finished, but I love her. And that is just... Um, that is Distress Oxides. That's what that is. With spritzes of water over the top. They are so cool, these Distress Oxides. Now this, as you can see, comes through from the other side of the page. And I believe that that is... I think it's this. The Ecoline brush pen, that's why it comes through. with a love note to myself on it. <laughs> I 
So these are some tiny houses that I did recently. So I did these recently, but I did them, but I've stuck them back in the back of the book. This this book, it, I mean, it has a flow of, of chronological order, but then there's other things that I've stuck in here and there. And I, and I think that's okay because I often come back to things. Like I started this a long time ago and came back to it recently and touched it up with gold and did these prints on the dress. So I do come back, move backwards and forwards around the book and it's nice. I like that. Again. I have actually stuck a lot of extra papers and things like that in there and the book's holding up extremely well. This is a Robert Oster ink. What's it called? Soda Pop Blue. Fabulous colour. Soda Pop Blue in a Lamy Safari. Really, really nice to draw with. And that is done in Pit Pen. I think this is a cool grey. I've got a cool grey and a warm grey and together, oh they are so good. This colour here is Cafe Creme by Robert Oster. Also an incredibly beautiful colour to work with. I love it. And this one here is done in a Kawako fountain pen. And the colour is Luna. Who did it? Okay. Well, this was an alcohol ink picture done by my mum, actually. Isn't she clever? It's beautiful. Sketches, trees. So I take a lot of notes in here and I do a lot of writing. It's a real joy to write in this book. So that's why I don't only want to do pictures because I really love to write in it too. But because it's day to a page, you kind of feel like you can't just keep writing and writing and writing. Little distress oxides. This color here is Robert Oster Midnight Sapphire. Beautiful color and, I, and done with a dip pen. And um, you'll find that that went straight through. Because if, if I was writing with Robert Oster, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't go through so much unless, of course, I washed water over the top of it and then it would totally go through. But because I painted it on, I used dip pen and I used a watercolour brush and painted on this colour, it's really, really, really intense and it's totally gone through. These are Distress Oxides and Colour Pencil, and that's uh, Daniel Smith's Soda Light, which is such a great colour. So I have absolutely loved using this book as my art journal and planner. I, it's, it's been an, a total joy to use. The one thing that I did find a lot was that because it's my planner as well as my art journal, say for example I painted a page and I painted it and it was the, the work was still wet but then I needed to go out and I needed to take my planner with me and I couldn't. I couldn't take my planner because the work that I had done in the art journal section was still wet and I couldn't close the book. That happened actually quite often and it's made me rethink uh, using uh, for, for next year for 2018 I won't put it all in one planner because for the style of art journaling that I do which is very wet and so much product if, you, if you're not going to do it that wet and use so much product it won't matter so much but because I put a lot in there and really push the pages with all the different products look at that. that hasn't come through at all 
Isn't that nice? Um, yeah, because I, I have so much product on there and it's very wet, it was rather inconvenient to have it all in one book, which is why I won't go for the all in one next year. Probably the, the biggest downfall. These are the color bursts like this as well. See how intense they are, so intense. But if you get up close, you can see all the little pigment colors that go inside and they are phenomenal. Ooh. This video is quite long, so we're nearly finished anyway. Um, these are Robert Oster inks. Pencil. Ooh, Robert Oster. These are from um, my Take 5 Art Challenges, which you can see. Again, lots of product. These are dilutions. So, oh, I've taped it up, but um, they go through. Dilutions, but dilutions go through everything. See? So you just, you just, that's just the way it rolls. And, you know, you're either okay with that or you're not. And then we get to here, and these are Robert Osters. And again, the, these these go through a little bit. Where they go through is where I've added water. Generally, the Robert Osters won't go through unless you put it on really heavy. Actually, these aren't. Um, but the purple is. This is Purple Soul. I'm obsessed with this Purple Soul by Robert Oster. It's so good. The where I add an ink wash, a uh, water wash, it tends to go through. See, that's not too bad. That's something I've put there. But that. That hasn't gone through, and that's Robert Oster. But this is, and I've put water on top of it, and so that's why it's gone through. But I can't help myself. I love to make things really fluid and add more water and make one thing spread into another. I just, I love it. And that's pretty much it. There's, from here on out, um, it's mostly writing because I've been doing so much art outside of my journal um, that I haven't really had time to art journal in here. And I've, but I've been taking lots of notes in here and doing a lot of writing. So, um, it, and it's, I've really, I, I've really enjoyed writing in here with my fountain pen, with the Lamy together. Oh, it's so good. I've, I've absolutely loved it. So I'm pretty much going to be taking notes in here because I'm planning, I'm doing a lot of planning now for 2018. So I think I'm going to do most of that in here and fill up these pages so there won't be a lot more art. Um, but yeah, that is my walkthrough of my Hobonichi Tesho 2017. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some good ideas and some thoughts uh, helped you with your making decisions for next year about which planning you would like to use. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.